Have you ever walked out on a stage and been faced with an audience about this size and had some inner dialogue that went something like this? Holy crap. <laughs> what have I just gotten myself into? <laughs> and that's pretty much my inner dialogue right now. I'm actually super excited to be here today. I love TED Talks. I wonder how many of y'all would raise your hands with me in agreement and confess that you too are an avid YouTube TED Talk watcher. Yeah, so many of us, right? They're amazing. I've spent days, if not possibly even weeks, totaling up of my life watching amazing TED Talks. They are incredible speakers. They're, they're controversial. They're kind of out-of-the-box speakers, right? Thinkers. They're controversial, and they're, they're entrepreneurs, and they're professors with like a bunch of initials after their names. Some of them are inventors and scientists. Some of them are 12 years old. What are those? A total underachiever. <laughs> the, the, the TED Talks, though, that really seem to get my attention, the one that's, that I seriously connect on, I've found that the speakers have this really cool common trait about them and that they are amazing storytellers. They have the ability... To, to carry you on this emotional roller coaster up and down, have you sitting on the edge of your seat in total anticipation, wanting to have that closure, wanting to have that release, to, to go out and chase the challenge that they've given you. Now, I am a Texan. Most of you here in this room are probably Texans, right? Or you wish you were, right? Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I am a sixth-generation Texan. And if you know a Texan or you are a Texan, you have to admit the fact that we love to talk, right? We love to tell stories, and we never, ever exaggerate. You can imagine my family reunions as we all kind of gathered around. We would play horseshoes and dominoes and tell stories, right? Play some spades, eat some great barbecue that Uncle Billy threw on the barbecue pit, and we'd tell more stories. It's just the way it was. And I remember one specific story that I, that I actually believed my entire childhood and going into some of my adult years, I believe this, because it was told to me by my grandmother. She told me that she was John Wayne's wife in the original movie, The Alamo. Now, she told me this story as we conveniently stood outside of The Alamo. And she said this story just audibly loudly enough that an entire crowd of tourists standing behind me happened to overhear. And before I knew it, Grandma was signing autographs. <laughs> As the crowd size kind of swelled up, so did Grandma's story. <laughs> and before you knew it, Grandma was explaining what a horrible kisser John Wayne was. Something about garlic, I don't know. Another story I was told was about a two, maybe three-year-old little girl named Joy. Now, you've got to picture Joy with me. Y'all know the little Gerber babies with the perfectly round-shaped heads that always look like they're smiling? That was Joy. And, and she has the Shirley Temple ringlets that kind of bounce around as she plays. 
Now the story goes that Joy was playing outside one Texas spring day when she began to not feel very well. So she went inside and she told her mom, and her mom just thought maybe she had gotten a little bit of heat exhaustion, so she said, you know, it's time for your afternoon nap. Go ahead and lay down and take a little nap. So the mom took Joy in and laid her on the living room couch. And about an hour or so would go by, and the young mom would go in to check on little Joy. And right away, she noticed visibly that something was wrong. Joy was laying there in absolute total sweat-soaked clothes. And the mom reached down and felt Joy's forehead and realized that she was burning on fire with this horrible fever. And so she, she reached down and tried to stand Joy up to try to get these soaked clothes off of her. And Joy couldn't even sustain her own body weight, and she crumbled to the ground. Immediately, the mom knew, this is worse than I thought. She scooped up her daughter, and she yelled to her husband, get the car, we've got to go to the hospital. Hours would go by inside of that waiting room. And finally, the doctors would come out to deliver the news. While Joy will survive, her life will never ever be the same again. You see, we think that she's actually paralyzed from the neck down. She may never walk again. You see, the year that this happened was 1949. And while Joy had laid innocently sleeping on that living room couch, the virus polio had run through her body crippling muscles, killing nerve endings, and destroying any chance she ever had at hope of a normal life. Her childhood would consist of major surgeries where they would actually go in and, and surgically snip her muscles in her legs to keep them from curling up. She would experience having to have her hip fused in place so that it wouldn't pop in and out of socket when she tried to stand. They would even surgically implant two 18-inch rods up either side of her spine to try to help her stand up straight. With all of that, plus months and months of physical therapy, with the help of crutches and braces, Joy would actually defy the odds and learn to walk. Later on in her teenage years, the doctors would come to her again and, and tell her, now Joy, we know you probably want to date, but the truth is you should never ever get your hopes up of ever getting married, because no man would ever want to take you on as the burden that you are. Can you imagine being told that? Can you imagine having to hear your child being told that? But at age 19, Joy again defied the odds, and she married her high school sweetheart named Rusty. And these two, again, would be faced 
with not only friends and family, but even the doctors again telling them, now you probably should never risk trying to have a family. Joy really can't get pregnant. It would really risk her health, what she has left of her health. Don't do it. If by some crazy miracle you actually were to get pregnant and be able to deliver a baby, there's no way you can ever care for that child. You can't even bend over it to pick them up. But these two had the hopes and the dreams of having a family. And so they went on to have two children. In fact, Joy would go on to be a school teacher. She and Rusty would pastor churches together where Joy would play the piano. And ultimately, they would become entrepreneurs here in San Antonio, launching several successful businesses. I don't really think that Joy's life was ever meant to be normal if there is such a thing. She faced challenge after challenge after challenge, and she never let it destroy her. Polio came in to cripple. I mean, this disease causes so much pain, and it can even cause death, and she never let it destroy her. She actually allowed it to define her as extraordinary. I don't know about y'all, but I tell you what, if I had to endure half the things that Joy went through, I would be one seriously bitter Betty. (laughs) I know for a fact that Joy was never that way. I know firsthand because I'm actually one of the two kids that Joy and Rusty had. And my parents are here today with us celebrating 48 years of marriage. I know, I know that if they could stand here on this stage right now, they would tell you that they owe it all to the glory of God and their faith, that they were able to make it through all the obstacles and trials of their journey. They have an amazing story. But I believe great stories happen around us every single day by people simply living their truth. Can you imagine if we were to be like Joy and Rusty and face the obstacles that come our way with the type of courage that they had? Can you imagine the stories that would be told about us? If we didn't let those inner voices that come to us and tell you, Corey, what are you doing on that stage? (laughs) If we didn't allow those external voices that come to us and tell us you don't have the right resources, you don't have the right gifts, and you can't do it. If we challenged in our hearts to defy those odds, can you imagine what great stories we could live? I do believe that it's an incredible gift to be a great storyteller. But I believe it's even more amazing to be able to live a great story. If you and I wake up every single day and determine in our hearts to simply live our truth, we will always inspire others. Thank you.